seven of us are present. The invocation this evening will be given by Matt Spanish Span with the Cherokee Strip Baptist Association and flag salute. Tammy, would you lead us in the flag salute at the invocation? <coughs> Matt, thank you for being here. First, I would like to say thank you to Mayor Shuey and you commissioners for the time and energy you put into managing the affairs of our city. I appreciate your dedication and effort. In honor of the Thanksgiving season and of the God who makes it possible for us, I'd like to read from Psalm 103, verses 1 through 5. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. During this Thanksgiving season, we, we tend to thank God for the food and all the material blessings that we have. But let's not forget these benefits that we have in him. Forgiveness, healing, redemption, love, and compassion. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the one from whom all blessings flow, we come before you this evening to praise your name. And we want to lift up you in each of our lives through all that we do. During this Thanksgiving season, help us not to be ungrateful but to remember the benefits that you give in each of our lives. I thank you for each one who is serving our city as a commissioner, mayor, or other leaders, that you would grant wisdom to all that they do, especially in the discussions tonight that you would guide and that we would make wise decisions that would benefit our city. This we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please join me in the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Item 4, consider approval of the minutes of the regular commission meeting of November the 7th. 2017. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ron, second by Ben. Please cast your vote. I'm trying. Start. Keep pushing. Motion carries 7 0. Item 5 words, presentations proclamations, and organizational business. Item 5.1, consider the pet available for adoption at the city animal shelter. A little table to put that down. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, I'm Charlotte Ringwald with Enid Animal Control. I'm the adoption coordinator out there. And oh, tonight my little friend here is Cole. And he is a one-year-old terrier mix. He's male, and he is looking for a new home. And he's going to be available. He's not available yet, but he'll be available this Saturday. And whether your kids are naughty or nice, you can get them a lump of coal. So uh, please come by and visit us. We have lots of great uh, dogs, and we also have lots of great cats available. So thank you, and have a happy Thanksgiving. Ready? Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Item 5.2, concerted appointments to the Call Lake Funding Oversight Committee and Advanced Development Authority. We have one vacancy uh, uh, tonight from call, uh, the Call Lake Funding Committee from Ward 5. Uh, Commissioner Wilson has recommended uh, Jack Ramey as her appointment to that. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ron. Second. Second by Tammy. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 5.2.
Consider, did I read this backwards? No. Consider appointments to the Carl Lake Funding Oversight Committee and Vance Development Authority. I guess we'll do the Vance Development Authority. Yeah, there's two vacancies. Uh, one vacancy is an at-large vacancy, and there are five applications. And those uh, individuals who have applied are Jerry Allen, Gary Cole, Carolyn Poplin, Thomas Rowe, and Taylor Venus. And so I know Taylor Venus is in the audience. Taylor, do you want to come up and tell everybody why they should vote for you? Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the commission, I'm Taylor Venus. Um, I work at Mitchell DeClerc, and I would really enjoy the opportunity to to foster the development of Vance and the city of Enid. I know it's a vital part of this community. Um, it's always has been for as long as I've known Enid, and it's it will always be that way as long as we continue to foster and put our time and effort forth into maintaining that relationship. And if and when another round of BRAC does come up, I would enjoy to work with the mayor and the other members of the authority to do all we can to continue to develop and enhance Vance's interaction with the city of Enid. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? And looking around, I don't see anybody else. No, Gary. I see Gary Cole. Thomas okay, so uh, five applicants vote. Yeah, one. We have one more. Yes, the other one is a vacancy that needs to be filled by a hospital administrator. We only have one application from a hospital administrator, Ms. Krista Roberts. I move to appoint Krista Roberts. Second. second. We have a motion by Ben and a second by Jonathan. Please cast your vote. She carries 7 0. Until they're tabulated. <coughs> item six, hearings. Item 6.1, there are none. Item seven, community development. Item 7.1, there are none. Item eight, under administration, 8.1. Consider a resolution amending the 2017 2018 airport fund budget by appropriating additional funds to increase the 2017 2018 appropriated amounts for the Air De airport department out of $193,400. Jennifer. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, this is for the necessary plans, specs, and associated project management by CEC <coughs> to take the airport terminal project from the design to completion. The CEC contract was approved on the 10-3 meeting. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by Ron, second by George. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Let's go through, let's do the in administ administration items first. Item 8.2, consider it. A resolution selecting the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, ODOT, as the authority to select the engineer responsible for city bridge inspections for the contract period of April 1, 2018 to March 31, 2020. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioners? Uh, this is a resolution basically authorizing the Department of Tran Transportation to uh, uh, select the engineer for does a bridge inspection project within the city of Enid. And I'll go through that program uh, for the commissioners here. Uh, ODOT, being the Oklahoma Department of Transportation, actually maintains a list of qualified engineering firms uh, that do work for the state and through, throughout the state for municipalities. And there is a selection process uh, which the ODOT, the city, is involved in. Uh, we can go through a our own selection process if we, if we prefer, but we've been quite satisfied with the uh, 
engineering firms that uh, ODOT has pre presented, and uh, this resolution will allow them to complete that process. Um, what, the process what the work includes is a biannual or every two years inspection of our uh, bridge system through the city of Enid. And a bridge system is a structure that's basically over 25 foot in uh, length, across uh, in length, uh, along the road roadway, and crosses a stream or structure. It also <laughs> includes um, uh, railroad um, uh, bridge structures or underpass overpasses. Uh, the requirement of the city of Enid is basically to file an action report if there's, uh, bridges are found in critical condition. The only one that's uh, out there known at this point is on uh, Willow Road. And as you're aware, that uh, bridge is closed until uh, we complete plans and replace that structure. There is no direct cost to the city for the program. Um, it is handled through the state and through the federal funding. Uh, I know it's hard to see, but this is just a map of the city of uh, Enid. And basically see this 412 going across the center and 81 up, uh, going up and down the center of the map. But what it does show is the about 75 uh, bridge locations that are inspected um, every two years in the city. Most of them are along North Boggy Creek, although they are scattered out on uh, Skelton Creek and West Boggy Creek and, and other areas uh, of the roadways. Again, I said 75 bridge structures. 71 are actually inspected every two years. There are four structures that are inspected annually, and they are listed uh, as shown here at 42nd Street south of 30th, uh, Chestnut Street just east of Oakwood Road, and Oklahoma Street just east of 5th Street, and then Broadway at uh, 5th Street. Now, these uh, structures are in adequate condition, but they are inspected annually because of uh, con concerns of uh, erosion because of uh, stream channels in the area. Uh, so it's the undermining of the bridge that's concerned. That's why there are on the annual inspection program. And from time to time, we do go in and do riprap repairs on these structures. Uh, there are four, four bridges uh, of, in the system that are posted for load limits. Load limits are assigned when the bridges 23 tons or less, uh, and we have four st uh, structures, 42nd Street north of Chestnut, uh, Cedar Street just east of Grand, which is a box structure but is load limited, and two on Market Street, the old Market Street just east of 30th Street. Um, all other streets, those streets are, other bridges are not posted as they are uh, 23 tons or above. This is a, a map of the bridge repair program done, uh, repairs done in 2008 based on the 2007 bond issue and uh, points out the bridges that were refurbished and re re replaced and that's one reason why we have uh, uh, fewer bridges that are in uh, critical condition because uh, a number of them have been replaced. However, there are two, there are two on here, um, G14 on Chestnut Avenue, which uh, is shown for future replacement. That actually has been replaced uh, since uh, 2008, so that's been replaced. The one that has uh, not been replaced is uh, Bridge G33, which is on 42nd Street, is south of Market, and that is the one uh, you may recall that is also load limited. Um, but I just want to provide you that information. Uh, basically, this is the resolution. So if I stay to uh, uh, select the uh, engineering firm, which would provide. Uh, the inspection service for the next two years. Motion to approve. Second. I have a question. Yes, sir. Does ODOT do Van Buren and Garriott? Uh, ODOT do does the, whole, the they, whole quarter. Uh, Department of Transportation does the bridge inspections on the state system. That's correct. They're not in our system. They're on the state system, uh, such as the overpass up north and overpass down south. Uh, they do those um, on a, a uh, every two years as well, as well as a number of other bridges. Tell me again so, when the pass on North Van Buren is set to begin. Um, I believe it is, it is in the state program to be constructed sometime between 2018 and 2019. That's the way I understand it. Yep. We have a motion second. Please cast your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Motion carries 7 0. <laughs> Item 8.3 Consider an ordinance amending the Enid Municipal Code 2014, Title II, Finance and Taxation, Chapter 6 Fee Schedule, 
Article C, Section 2-6C-2, landfill permit fees to provide a refuse and rubbish fees per ton for years 2018 through 2024. Section 2-6E-8, solid waste collection charges to provide a $4 fee for failing to use polycarts correctly and to restructure payment for removal of bulk waste, providing for repealer, savings clause, severability, and codification. Scott. Mr. Mayor and Commissioners, we have uh, three main uh, solutions to the issues here that I'd like to present to you tonight. Uh, the first one deals with residential polycarts. You've seen this presentation before, but these are the kind of issues that we can have when we're trying to collect trash. We can have carts that are severely overloaded. We can have some that uh, cars are parked or they're too close to mailboxes, and some that just aren't put out on time. And the, the problem that it causes for us is that when we pick up trash geographically, then when someone does fix their problem, they want us to come back and pick up their trash, which we do. But then we may be working on a completely different side of town, and we've got to drive all the way across town and get that trash picked up. So this uh, first uh, solution will hopefully um, give us the ability to keep some of this from happening. We're, we're really wanting to, to get rid of the problem, and we really want to have uh, something in place for us so that we don't always have to charge it, but if we have somebody that's, that's really... We're having to go back all the time, then we have something that we can do to mitigate the cost of having to drive all the way across town and spend more time and labor and fuel to go take care of that customer. So that's the first item that we want to talk about. This is kind of the difference. It's $4 for us to come back and make that extra trip, <coughs> a special trip that we, we've already driven by their house once. So if, if they've got a, if they call us and their trash was out late, we can confirm that it wasn't out and we have the ability to charge them $4 to come back and get their trash. Or if like these pictures show, you know, they had it where it's just unacceptable for us to be able to pick up. Now we have the ability to charge them that $4 to come back to the residence and pick it up. The second thing that uh, I'd like to discuss is for bulk pickup. We've got these big clamshell trucks and we come and we take care of our customers when they put out limbs and put out extra trash and, and things like that. And our current ordinance is very confusing to the customer. It is, we should be charging them at least $15 every time we go out for the first yard and then $4.70 per yard after that up to 20 yards and then $25 an hour. So if you have a full truck, we should be charging you right now $104 around $104 to come pick that load up. It's very confusing to tell a customer where they are in that 15 to 104 because nobody knows how many cubic yards they have. So we just want to simplify that and say, hey, if you need help, $20 will get us out there. And if, if we can get it in our truck, it's only going to cost you $20. If you have such a big pile that we have to continue coming out to you the same pile over and over again, then after the first load, each additional load is $65. If they called in two months from now and had another small pile, it would be the $20, unless that pile was so big we had to you know, make additional trips. So that's the changes for bulk pickup. At the landfill, this is, this is gonna be another, uh, the third and final solution we have. We have a lot of equipment to maintain, and our rates, haven't been changed since 2012. These are some of our competitors' rates ranging from around $40 a ton to $56 a ton. We are at $28 a ton right now for our non-residents and or for our residents and $35 a ton for non-residents. So we need to update this rate. And so we've, we've uh, got kind of a chart. I'm not sure you can see it very well here in this graphic. But it's, uh, we want to keep it on even dollar amounts. So the first presentation had a percentage increase. We decided to do away with that. That way we could keep with some even dollar amounts. And so for the next two years, the proposal is the tonnage rate goes up $5 per ton for the next two years. And then as the chart continues down, it's only $2 per ton increase through the year 2025. The only deviation would be the non-resident 2025 rate is a $5 increase instead of a $2 increase. That's really the only deviation from the $5 and $2 pattern. So these are the three solutions that will hopefully simplify 
and update the solid waste fees that have been confusing, quite frankly, for us to explain to customers. And I'm sure you guys may have had some calls when we, you know, have customers that complain about that. So hopefully this will solve all of our issues and maybe create a little additional revenue that's well needed for our operation. So. Scott, just to clarify, we did fix that in the ordinance so that non-resident final rate is, I think, $57. It's a $2 increase from the previous year. When you say bulk pickup, do you mean the clamshell truck? Or is that yes, separate? the clamshell so truck. So that's been free, right? Okay, so the ordinance... This is the actual or what let me get let me get back here. There it is. The actual ordinance doesn't say anything about free. Right, but that isn't that what it's been though? Yes. We have been directed to let, to have a first load for free. The yes. ordinance doesn't support that free first load. We've traditionally for some time been doing it for free. Right. It says $15 and 470 plus $25 an hour. If it takes uh, more than the one load and more than the one hour, we've been charging people based on that formula. We'll charge them on that formula. What Scott's telling you is, I can remember a man on Chestnut that was frustrated, uh, could not be convinced that his pile was big enough that it cost whatever it was. And uh, so this will be a lot better with the flat rate. But you're right, even though the ordinance says 15, we've been picking that for free as a service. So it's not going to be free anymore? It would not be free anymore. It would be $20. But what about the uh, somebody that takes a pickup load of limbs after the landfills are charged for that? You know, what, one of the things that is really good about what we're doing is we are continuing to let our residents go to our landfill 12 times per year for free. So if somebody does not want to pay $20 when they set their one recliner out on the curb or some small amount of branches, then they are free to use one of their 12 dumps to come out and visit our landfill. So and there's no charge for the, for the 12? There's no charge. So, the, so does the, the uh, limbs count for one of the 12 dumps? It, yes. Good question. So that's the summary of uh, the three changes that we're hoping to uh, to get passed tonight. If you have uh, uh, multiple pickups, what's what's the gap? If I've got something that gets picked up on Monday, I get a bulk to pick up on Monday. How long until it hits sixty five or or, or or twenty, as far as that that additional charge? If I have them come the next day, is it sixty five or is the next day twenty? Okay, so uh, let me get back to this picture. That truck that you see right there. If, if you just have one pile and we can get it in that truck, yep. it's $20. All right. If you call back two days later and that pile, you know, we, we, pile, we completely picked up the pile on Monday. And on Wednesday, you call back. Mm -hmm. If we get that truck out there, $20. But what we won't do, if you've got a, a, giant, a giant pile and you want us to come pick it up, you call us and we pick it up. It's not a come pick up one load and then tomorrow come pick up one load. We're gonna put you on our list one time, we're gonna get your get your, your pile taken care of for you and then we'll move on to our next customer. And, and these charges will be added to your city utility bill and I'm assuming they'll be itemized on there as pickup charge? Yes, there is an extra trash charge that that's, that's what it gets put on on the city utility bill. Are the rates the same for a residential uh, versus those that are in commercial business doing lawn services? So for this bulk pickup, this is really for residential only. The, our commercial option, and that's the way the ordinance is written, uh, I'm talking about residential. For commercial, we offer a different solution with our, with our roll-off containers. So if you've you know, you got a business that's remodeling, we don't want them to put their stuff out on, on Randolph on the square. So we, you know, we can get them a roll-off container, and that's how we'll handle all of our commercial uh, bulk pickup is through roll-off containers. So the ones that are like in tree trimming business, are the rates the same for them as it is residential or is it a different price? It is, the way it's written, it's it's gonna be the same price if they have a bulk pickup. It, it's kind of, it may, it may vary, it depends on who calls it in. I mean, you could have someone trim and then the homeowner calls in. So if the homeowner calls in, we're gonna bill the homeowner. If it's a commercial person, then they should be picking up their own things and taking hauling them out to the landfill. Well, I'm, I have a little bit of a question about the $4 charge for if you have to move the cart. Like, are you, like, 
Talk about that a little bit. Okay. Like I understand if somebody's car is parked in front of it. What I'm getting at is I always put my trash on the curb like I'm supposed to, but when I get home, it's always in the middle of my driveway. So if you want me to put my trash can where it's supposed to be, you better put it back where it's supposed to be, not in the middle of my driveway. Well, I would and they be- charge me $4 when I had to move it. Sure, this, this would be an instance like, let's look at this picture on the bottom right. We're not gonna pick that container up because the way that those arms open up, we can easily destroy that mailbox. So we'll skip that one and the customer will call in and then after they move it, then we'll come back and, and take care of it. That's what we're talking about there, if the cart has to be moved. Gotcha. Or the driver could just get out himself and move it and then charge the $4 and move on. There are instances, though, and that's what, that's what I like about this $4. It could be, like that car parked right there, it could be that that, that person lives you know, close to a school and someone else's, you know, we have the ability to not, to not charge that $4. Maybe that's not their vehicle, you know, and right. they don't have any control over that, so. Our intent is not to be punitive here. Our intent is really, this is a repetitive thing that Scott and his department sees frequently. Right. Um, that's why I would just hope that it wouldn't get to be picky. We intend to be very, um, to use good judgment in applying this. Um, Any other questions? Move to approve. Second. Motion by Ben. Second by Jonathan. Let's cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. We'll now go back to the Advanced Development Authority large position. The vote was five for Taylor Venus and two for Jer uh, Jerry Allen. Taylor, congratulations. The two voting for Jerome Allen were Ron Jansen and Bill Shuey. Those voting for Taylor Ven Venus, uh, Derwin, Ben, Jonathan, Tammy, and George. Those were five votes. Jer uh, Jerry Allen had two. Now we'll go to item. Item nine, consent items. Move to approve. Motion by Ben to Second. approve. Second by Jonathan. Please guess your vote. Motion carries seven zero. Item 10, approval of claims in the amount of $3,351,815.88. Gentlemen, you know, that was in that the was consent Oh, that was in consent. Yeah. Yeah. Item 10, the real item 10, recess to convene as the Enid Municipal Authority. Item, item 11, all the trustees of the Enid Municipal Authority are in attendance at the regular meeting. Item 12, the Enid Municipal Authority regular meeting is now in session. Item 12.1, approval of claims in the amount of $134,613.40. Motion to approve. Motion by John Jonathan. Second. Second by Derwin. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7-0. Item 12, the Indian Municipal Authority regular meeting is now in session. Item 12.1, approval of claims. We just did that. I'm in a loop. <laughs> <coughs> Item 13, adjourn to, to convene as the Enid Economic Development Authority. Item 14, trustees of the Enid Economic Development Authority regular meeting are all in attendance. Item 15, the Enid Economic Development Authority regular meeting is now in session. Item 15.1, consider approval of the room occupancy guarantee agreement, parking lot grant letter agreement, and completion guarantee from Enid Best Western, is that properties? Yeah, BWP. 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 Okay, BWP. Enid BWP, LLC, Aston Management Company, and Dr. Atul Patel, and the special 
warranty deed transferring downtown property to the hotel developer at closing and authorize the chairman of the Enid Economic Development Authority to execute all documents necessary for the closing with Enid BWP LLC. Yes, uh, Chairman and Trustees, th these are the remaining four documents that need to be approved before we can close on the property. Uh, these four documents we've talked about um, before. Uh, they are in the Master Development Agreement that was approved back in February. Uh, the Hotel uh, Room Rate Agreement. Uh, Julia, can you go ahead and pull that open? Uh, what that does to remind everybody, that's <clears throat> it's a 40% room rate guarantee calculated on an annual basis and uh, it's based on uh, 96 rooms uh, simply times 365 it gives you uh, the total a number of rooms and you take that times 40 uh, 40 percent you get something like 14,016 so that's the baseline number that we would be looking at when it comes time at the end of the year to figure out if there was any benefit due from this. If there were less rooms than that, there would be the number of rooms times the average daily rate, which is, uh, would be calculated uh, on an annual basis. And that would be what would be paid out. Um, and this I, is actual average daily rate that they would have had over yes. the year, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, so as you know, the average daily rate fluctuates. Uh, the monthly report that you see, you see that it goes up and down every month. Uh, and so this, this particular average daily rate is the average daily rate at this hotel. So we're expecting, and again, I will say that I, I will be very surprised if we ever pay almost 40%, uh, but if we do, um, it's a favorable calculation uh, for the city and a fair calculation. And it gives, the city has an opportunity, the EDA does through years two through five, to recoup based on a similar formula. If we have 45% occupancy one year, then that 5% extra uh, equated in rooms times the average daily rate could be recouped um, up to the amount that the city has been, been out. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, the gist of it. There are some examples in the body of the document and there is an exhibit uh, at the end. So hopefully you had a chance to look at it, but I think it's important to understand this document. It's um, do you have any questions about how the room rate guarantee would work? Any questions on that? Do, do we, d does the city have any similar uh, agreements in, in place already for any of the other hotels in town? No. <coughs> it's, it's, as far I as I know. I just want to make sure we didn't have. We've never incentivized another hotel that I'm aware of. Okay. Thank you. Other questions? Oh, hey, do we have any idea at this point uh, when we're going to close on this. I, I hate to keep bringing this up, but uh, surely somebody uh, can tell us uh, when, when they're going to be ready to close. It's, this is starting to look a great deal like the, uh, the previous uh, Lodgewell agreement that drug us out for months and months and no, no, promised no. that they were ready to start and then all of a sudden uh, it was all over. Now oh, this and, is, this, Commissioner, I understand your frustration because um, once again, I will say we're very close. I don't think anybody can tell you the date yet, but we are far apart from where we were at with Lodgewell. The financing... Um, I was uh, told that Lodgewell was ready to start construction. So I don't I, think I, that I, was accurate. That, that was probably not a... <laughs> in, in, in any case, no, I, I, I just uh, can't figure out... One of, <coughs> one of the reasons why we really liked this uh, deal to begin with was that they appeared to have, uh, you know, their financing already... In, in order, and now here we are, you know, three months beyond the, the closing date that was in our agreement, and we still don't even have a clue as to when the bank well, is going to be ready to close. Here's the update that I received Monday when I went down and spoke with uh, Todd Humphrey down at the Abstract Company and Crystal Olson. Um, the, the title work has been sent off to First American Title Insurance Company. They were expecting it back last week. As of yesterday, they didn't have it back yet. As soon as they get that back, with the title commitment, they'll send it over to the bank. Um, Corey Moore, the lending officer, has told me that everything is in order. They just need to get that title commitment back. And it's my understanding they can set a closing date when they, when they do that. So, again, I feel like it's very, very close. I wish I could have told you when it's going to be. 
um, but it's going to be soon. And certainly, uh, this is uh, BWP and, and Dr. Patel and Aston Management has been fantastic to work with. They have two hotels already here in town, so I, I realize it sounds like it's the same, but it's not. Um, these documents, uh, this one, the, uh, the completion guarantee, which if you read through that, uh, um, once that's approved, <coughs> essentially that document talks about performance um, and, 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 and remedies for when there is a performance. And then the other document is the uh, uh, parking lot uh, grant agreement. And finally, the special warranty deed that has the revision reversion clause in it if for something, for some reason after close, if it doesn't get built, it rever the property reverts back to the city. Do we still have an effective development agreement uh, on this? I, I yes. know it expired, I think, at uh, some point, didn't it? Um, the, the agreement did not expire, but what you're referring to is the extension that we made on the close was to the end of October. Mm -hmm. And in that specific language, it talks about the EDA may, at its, may have said its sole discretion extend the date or not, something and, and I know that as close as we are, um, I didn't feel like it was necessary to come back and ask for another extension. I think it's better just to get closed. It, I, I'm assuming that they're still going to ask for their 45 days after closing to begin construction. Um, Dr. Patel is very well aware of the 45 days. In fact, he's asked several times about starting early. And the only reason I haven't brought that forward is simply because that, I've been told that could cause some issues with the with the financer and the title company. So we've just tried to avoid that. Well, you don't think he's going to insist on waiting another 45 days after we close? I think he's uh, he's well aware that he's got 45 days, but I think he's wanting to get started. I know that uh, his construction manager who was here oh, a couple months ago when we did the extension uh, has been in close contact with uh, city staff and talking particularly to Angela Rasmus and staff about the building permit uh, that we have ready to go. So I think we're in really good shape. Uh, Brent, do you have uh, some updates from uh, Dr. Patel? Anything more current? I would say you uh, covered it very well. I did speak to Dr. Patel this morning, and uh, uh, he is he is not what's what's holding this up. He's just waiting for the financing to uh, uh, to get its final approval. They were waiting on an appraisal that I guess is uh, all completed as of last night, and everything looked good. Um, yeah, he really wanted to start work last week, wanted to start putting up fencing, and, and I think it's probably wise that uh, we just make sure that it's clean and ready. I think his dirt moving equipment is already in town, <laughs> and uh, he's, he's really hoping as soon as, as, soon as uh, the, the closing happens on the property that he can get in there, and get the fences up, and start moving dirt. Carol, are you happy with the documents as we have in front of us? <coughs> Anything yes. we should? <coughs> but... <coughs> There's a specific recommendation. Um, when you make your motion, if you decide to approve it, I would like a motion that gives the chairman um, the authority to execute agreements and the deed and include any incidental changes to the documents prior to closing. Um, there, there is a possibility. I put in the deed the um, exceptions um, based on a preliminary um, title examination. When the examination comes in, there might be one taken off and one put on. So um, we, we um, would like the incidental changes. It's, it's you know, like um, Mr. McKeever may want me to characterize a, a um, easement slightly differently than what I have. So, I mean, we're really not talking about very much. But yes, I like the documents, um, but I would like to see the uh, final uh, underwriter and, and title wording um, for um, Exhibit A of the deed. Okay, before we get too far, I'm going to make a motion to approve the item and authorize the chairman to execute documents uh, including such in incidental revisions as the city attorney discussed. I have a question. Does that mean I sign that tonight? No, you don't. That's what I thought. Is it in the group of documents to be signed, or was that left out? Um, Alyssa knows. Because I signed them all tonight. You already have signed them all? Pardon me? No. <coughs> no. These documents, um, we will um, 
we wanted to get approval, but we'll have you sign them shortly before the closing, which should be in a couple days. My pleasure. You bet. Thanks. I appreciate your optimism. We have a motion. Second. I think I, I think second. Not I second. second. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 6 1. I said I would never support the room rate guarantee again. <laughs> So and I didn't hear what you said. I said I said I would never support that room rate guarantee ever again, and it will not do it. Okay. Motion carries 6-1. Item 16. Uh, we have 15.2. Well, this thing just keeps rolling. <laughs> Consider a resolution authorizing the chairman of the Enid Economic Development Authority to execute all documents necessary for the sale and transfer of the developmental property to Enid BWP Limited Liability Company and take all actions necessary at the real estate closing. I move to approve this uh, in addition, allowing the chairman to approve the documents with, with uh, minor incidental changes as may occur. Second. Motion by Ben, second by George. Further discussion? Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Item 16. We'll now adjourn to convene as the Enid Public, Tra Public Transportation Authority. Item 17, all trustees of the Enid Public Transportation Authority are in attendance at the regular meeting. Item 18, the Enid Public Transportation Authority regular meeting is now in session. Item 18.1, approval of claims in the amount of $4,442.29. Motion to approve. Second. Motion by second by George. Please cast your vote. Motion carries 7 0. Item 19, we'll, uh, we'll now adjourn to reconvene as the Enid City Commission. Item 20, public comments. We have one person signed up, Diane. Diane Levesque, 1324 West Oak, and I know that some of you already know what I'm going to talk about that because you just saw this in the newspaper, and any time that comes up, I want to talk about <coughs> that. And now in conjunction with the study session where the um, um, state of the state was discussed and dedicated revenue and the fact that uh, revenue receipts for the state are up, yeah, I've uh, mentioned before that the problem in when I've seen this is that you had a north-south problem rather than an east-west. But for once, Kingfisher County has now lost money. Yeah, we've buried that old uh, hatchet of negativity you can celebrate now. They've lost money just like you have. But you've got, you've already raised your... Um, your sales tax, and you still have this. But the good news is Soapweeds has a new owner. After how many years now? And StarTech building is occupied, all that space and so many floors by one occupant that's also paying a lease for the Miles uh, Music Building which is also up for lease. And it happens to be also, uh, what is that, Berkshire Hathaway is also Anderson, which already has an office on uh, Van Buren. So you have occupancy. Productive occupancy is another matter entirely. So I want to bring it to the city commission's attention also that uh, I haven't accepted or offered to uh, fill a position as the NAACP economic development officer, but uh, after careful consideration, I, a plan, I plan to do exactly that. I'm, I'm very tied, tight for time these days, but I'm going to give that my level best because I also want to look into the commercial real estate situation, not limited to the uh, Anderson 
situation, but also with regarding whatever's going on with Ernie Courier. Thank you. Item 21, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion by George, second by Tammy. Please cast your vote. Motion carries seven, zero. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for the Enid City Commission meeting. If you have any questions or comments, visit our website at enid.org.